lines of scripture. It reads, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And the word of the Lord is for us. Let me talk briefly, simply about being in the place of God. I want you to use a very recurring thing. Put your neighbor say, neighbor. Neighbor. I'm coming out of the ditch. I'm coming out of the ditch. And I'm about to be rich. Somebody else, I'm coming out of the ditch. I'm coming out of the ditch. And I'm about to be rich. I believe it. Whenever you see God take time as a father to take needle and thread to stitch a garment, the garment is definitive of who the person is like. With Aaron's garments, when God took time to design Aaron's garments, it's because he was to have a role of distinction. Somebody say distinction. The coat that Jacob has prepared for Joseph is a coat of many colors. It's not a coat of many dyes. It's not one fabric dyed into a multiplicity of colors, but it is a many fabric stitched together. If God has his hand on you, your life will become a multi-faceted individual. If God's hand is on your life, you cannot be a one-dimensional person. You have to think outside the box. You have to realize that there is no box. And I found out that people will hate you because they can't own you. They can't control you. They can't lock you up in a system. They can't lock you up in a denomination. They can't lock you up in a way of life or a philosophy. Because God will take a little piece of this and a little piece of that and the other and put it all together and make one coat out of many things. You will recognize that some of the stuff that you went through wasn't good, but when God gets through stitching everything together, you'll know that everything worked out for the good. You'll say like David, it was good that I was afflicted. Anybody recognize that they, it's good that something that you, that you went through was good? While they did not seem good, while they did not feel good, you understand that it worked out for you. We live in a day that there are people that want to see and they take credit for what God has done in your life. But you have to understand that there is not one person that can take credit for making you. There are people that are saying, well, I know them and, and I made them who they are. But the truth of the matter is that it took a little of this, it took a little of that, and it took a little of the other to make who God made me to be. God does not let anybody get credit for making you. But it's about who your daddy is. Yeah. It's your daddy that put that coat on you. The coat belongs to your father. And he used a whole lot of things. He used some saved people. He used some unsaved people. He used some good things. He used some bad things. And God took all of that stuff. And when you come out, you're dressed in wisdom. You're dressed in righteousness. You're dressed in experience. You're dressed in understanding. Because God wants to expose you to some things that others were not exposed to so that you can have an elevated mind. It's not about who raised you, it's not about who stayed, it's not about who left. You just thank God for the coat that He gave you. Truth of the matter is that God took so many different things that when people can't categorize you, they begin to criticize you. Uh, you have to understand that God is going to take you beyond the place that you planted and take you places where you didn't know that you could be blessed. Look at somebody else, I'll get it somewhere. You have to realize that you have limitless blessings. 
Anybody recognize and will prophesy even over your own life that in this year of 2013, you have limitless blessings. Yeah. Limitless. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 God will take a little cotton and he'll take a little wood, a wool, he'll take a little satin. He'll take a little bit of this and a little bit of that. In other words, the wealth of the wicked is laid up. Laid up. Amen. That's what it says. Don't you have to understand Lord, and if you peruse through the scriptures, you'll understand that most great men and women of the Bible, God used them in a mighty way. Yeah. They will raise beyond their limits. Joseph ends up marrying an Egyptian woman and he produces biracial children. Uh -huh. He's a Hebrew child, but he is recognized more amongst the Egyptians than his own people. Wow. Sometimes the people that grow up with you don't recognize you. Wow. <laughs> Uh, sometimes uh, uh, God has to take you somewhere else so that you can get the recognition uh, that you wouldn't get at home. And after a while, everybody else is catching up. Uh, mm -hmm. Or take Paul. Paul, whose name is Roman for his Roman citizenship, but his Hebrew name is Saul. Yeah. Because he is a Hebrew citizen from Rome and he is so multifaceted that he can become all things to all people. Yeah. So that some might be saved. And may I submit to you that you have no ministry until you are able to become all things. All things. To all people. All things. Or take Moses, if you will. Moses is born to a Hebrew woman, but he's educated amongst the Egyptians so that he would be exposed intellectually to things that the other people or not. Wow. Because God wanted to use him to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Amen. So God will expose you to things that make you tough. He'll expose you to things that make you bold and tenacious so that you won't have the language of a slave. When you've been exposed to more, you can love people, but you can't take their place that you haven't gone further than they have. And we live in a day where people will resent you from going further. Uh, they, they'll resent you for, for, for obtaining. You know, they, 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 they pray for you to get stuff, and when you get it, they get mad. I don't understand. Truth of the matter is that God will take you further so that you can become a help to your brothers and sisters who were limited. And all of a sudden, it'll start to make sense. Why do people fix you? It'll start to make sense why people persecute you. Why you have a hard time. You change your head. And they still didn't like you. You change your dress and they, 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 they still didn't like you. They, you change your style. But, but you, you will never fit in the clique or the club because it's too small. Amen. You have to understand in this season, in this new year of 2013, you need to thank God when he shuts the door. Amen. 